Surging coronavirus numbers here in Arizona and a warning from local hospitals about a lack of staff. Plus three toys that have landed on 2020's most dangerous list. And is Thanksgiving Day food really bad for your pets? We are verifying. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and YouTube. Hi guys, it's Tram here. We are getting started with the coronavirus surging here in Arizona and across the nation. The Arizona Department of Health Services is reporting nearly 4,000 new cases today, as well as nine new deaths. Arizona has had more than 310,000 confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic. Banner Health is concerned it won't have enough staff to take care of everyone. Team 12's Jen Wall joins us with the very latest moves that they're making to prepare. Yeah, Banner Health tells us they're working very fast to hire hundreds of health care workers in Arizona. Now, this comes after their forecast tool paints a, quote, very dark winter ahead. When it comes to this second COVID-19 surge, Banner is facing a lot of concerns and tough decisions on patient care. The large care network saying hospitals could be backed up in as little as two weeks. So what does that mean? Well, Banner projects by December 4th, it will be running at 125% of licensed bed capacity. They say they've hired 1,000 healthcare workers from out of state and are recruiting 900 more. But there's a lot of competition because we aren't the only ones facing an increase in COVID cases. Meanwhile, because of the shortage of staffing, they're also having to look into letting staffers who have asymptomatic COVID cases keep working. That would certainly be something that we would try to avoid uh, if at all possible, but something that we recognize may have to come into play. With COVID-19 cases in Arizona ramping up, roaring into those levels that we saw over the summer, there's another warning. We could actually peak around Christmas, according to experts. And Banner Health officials are also urging everyone to take all of those safety precautions, wear your mask, social distance, and make those safe Thanksgiving Day plans. For now, we're in Gilbert, Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. For the third week in a row, ASU will not have a football game. Their game against Utah was canceled yesterday. It had been moved to Sunday to give the Devils more time to bounce back from their COVID-19 outbreak. However, ASU still won't have enough players cleared to play this week. And more changes. The University of Arizona basketball was supposed to open against NAU tonight, but that game was called off because of a positive test within NAU's program. Arizona's next game is Friday at home versus Grambling State. The city of Tempe is trying to help people who are facing eviction because of the pandemic. Tempe says nearly $2 million in emergency funds are available for anyone having trouble paying their rent or mortgage. You have to be a Tempe resident to qualify. We have more details on 12news.com. And you can find the latest details about the coronavirus and how it's affecting Arizona on our free 12 News app. COVID-19 isn't the only thing we need to look out for this holiday season. With more people shopping online, porch pirates are out in full force. Team 12's Matt Uris has some advice from Phoenix Police and Fire to keep your holidays safe. That's right. Good afternoon. The holiday season typically brings out the best in almost all of us, but we do have some package thieves out there and overzealous dads looking to get those Christmas lights up just right. I'm joined by Phoenix Fire and Phoenix PD. Let's start with Phoenix PD and Sergeant Thompson. What are your tips to make sure everyone gets those presents on Christmas Day? Remember four things. When you leave your packages out on the porch, they're a temptation to people who want to steal them. Think about delivering them to your workplace, and maybe a relative or a neighbor can, that can come pick them up or is going to be home. You can also deliver them to the post office and have them hold them. Or you can have them sent to the store where you're buying them from. It's a little less convenient, but it's a lot safer. Thank you very much, sir. Now over to Phoenix Fire's Rob McDade. That top step, pretty dangerous. It is. Look, we all want to be Clark Griswold. We love the way our house looks. Be careful. We do go on injuries every single year, serious injuries. The people falling off their ladders have somebody support it. Don't stand on that top step. Right here, we got a space heater. A couple pro tips real quick. That's right. So remember, you should only heat your home with a space heater that is a qualified one with university or with a underwriter's laboratory. Got that. So if it falls over, it shuts off. That way we're going to be safe inside of our home. We want to make sure that we have something that is not 
used outside like a barbecue. It's going to keep you warm and make sure that it's going to keep you safe. Looks nice as well. I like that, Rob. One final note, Sergeant Thompson's last day on the force. How many years of service, sir? 37. Thank you very much on behalf of the community for all of them. I hope you enjoy Thanksgiving and the rest of the time hopefully you have off coming up, sir. I will. And thanks to the community for taking care of my family with a job. And thank to, thanks to the community. I think Phoenix is the greatest community on the planet. Thank you, sir. In Phoenix, Matt Uris, 12 News. Oh, we will miss you, Sergeant Thompson. Thank you so much for those 37 years of service. Well, many of our kiddos already have their Christmas list ready to go, but make sure you're checking that list twice for the most dangerous toys of 2020. The first toy on a consumer watchdog list, the Calico Critters Nursery Friends. The group says this toy is meant for children three and up, but they say that there's still a potential choking hazard for young kids. Another toy is the Get Outside Go Launch. The packaging includes a warning label of choking and outdoor use, but the group says the toy can cause potential eye and facial injuries too. And number three on the list, the Avengers Vibranium Claw. It can also cause potential eye and facial injuries. Hashtag most clicked, here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. We have an update on the 13-year-old boy who was shot in Maryvale earlier this week. Phoenix police say on Monday night, a 16-year-old shot his friend while mishandling a gun. Authorities say the 16-year-old ran away and carjacked a man at gunpoint. That teen is now in, the, in jail. Meantime, the 13-year-old is in the hospital in critical condition. Meghan Markle is revealing that she had a miscarriage over the summer. In an op-ed for the New York Times, the Ju Duchess of Sussex says that she lost her second child after feeling a sharp cramp while changing her son Archie's diaper back in July. She says she's sharing her story in hopes of helping others. And a heads up, if you are planning on using a crock pot this Thanksgiving, nearly a million crock pots are being recalled because they could burn you. The lid on Sunbeam's six quart express crock multi cookers can just pop off in the middle of cooking. Nearly 100 people have been injured so far. If you have one of these, Sunbeam says stop using its pressure cooker mode and contact them for a free replacement lid. And we want to say a great big thank you so much to everyone who donated to our Turkey Tuesday drive. And guess what? There's still time to help more families in need. The 28th year of Turkey Tuesday continues through the end of the month. To donate $15 right now, it's super easy. Just text TURKEY to 474747. Now let's check in with Jamie for your Thanksgiving forecast. Well, the desert's still looking rather festive as we head into the holidays. Beautiful pictures like this coming in all the time to our 12 News Weather Watchers Facebook fan page. Be sure to join us there for that amazing photography. And how about this? Two days in a row at seasonal temperatures. 71 is our expected high for today, and that's right where we're supposed to be. It is looking great. We'll see the numbers dropping off into the 60s and 50s later on today, but into the afternoon, 70, 71 degrees. And you can see for the rest of the state, we're talking about those seasonal numbers. Plenty of 50s around the high country. Sanford at 67, however, Globe and Winslow into the lower 60s. Sedona 59. Prescott at 58 and Payson at 57 while Flagstaff tops out at 51. We're all under the sunshine for today and looking ahead, the numbers continue to drop off. In fact, for Friday, that is going to be the coldest day in that seven day forecast. As we roll into the weekend, those temperatures bounce back rather quickly. And as we talk about Thursday going into Friday, we do have a chance of some snow showers across the high country, but it looks like snowfall totals will stay under one inch. So a little more of a nuisance snowfall than anything else. Thanksgiving, however, still looking great. The numbers are about where they should be for southern Arizona to low 70s around the White Mountains and northern Arizona. You'll find lots of low and mid 50s and some parts could even pick up a low 60. Your seven day forecast. It's cold on Friday and the temperatures well, they bounce back across the weekend. All right, thank you, Jamie. We can't forget about a very important family member to keep safe this Thanksgiving, our pets. We know those puppy eyes, they are so hard to say no to, but there are Thanksgiving foods that can make them very sick. Team 12's Jason Puckett verifies for us which foods are safe. We all know that perfect Thanksgiving spread, the big turkey, all those sides, and no one is more excited about all that delicious food than the family dog. That's why we're talking about this viral claim. It's a list of what you can and can't feed your dog on Thanksgiving. And on the bad side, turkey skin, gravy, stuffing, bread dough, candied yams, etc. On the good side, only dog food. 
Now, since we know some of us are weak and like to spoil our pets, and others are a bit clumsy and might drop some food, we're verifying if this is true. To find out, we checked with the Texas A&M Veterinary School, the American Veterinary Medical Association, and the American Kennel Club. Short answer, yes, most of the things on this list shouldn't be fed to pets, but some are worse than others. Raisins, grapes, chocolate, stuffing with onion or garlic, and macadamia nuts are highly toxic to your pets. If they get any of this, call the vets. But the rest of the list aren't quite as serious. Turkey skin, fat trimmings, butter, and gravy aren't great. They're filled with fat, which the AVMA says can lead to pancreatitis. Bread dough is dangerous because it can swell inside a pet's stomach, and spices like sage and nutmeg aren't great either, but are typically found in small doses and shouldn't be concerning. Now, store-bought mushrooms are fine, corn is fine, though the cobs can be a choking hazard, and cooked yams are fine, but avoid a lot of sugar. So bottom line, yeah, for the most part, this list is correct. A lot of Thanksgiving food is bad for your furry family members. Now, pets will be pets, and if they accidentally get some of this, Keep an eye on them and call your vet if they start acting differently. And if you need to double check, we have a nice list of all these foods up on our website. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Mm, sorry, Presley, can't give it to ya. Well, have you seen this viral owl that hitched a ride on the Rockefeller Plaza Christmas tree this year? A probably named Rockefeller, the little owl who stole our hearts, has been released back into the wild there. She'd spent a few days at a wildlife center to make sure that she was okay after her wild ride on the 75-foot spruce. And there she goes. So sweet. She'll find another tree. Okay, that's your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes. No commercial.